I was scared to death. The most scared I've ever been in my life. You are about to see real people. What the hell is going on here? Reliving horrifying paranormal encounters for the first time. I freak. I was screaming. When home renovations unleash hell. It, it made me go numb. That pretty much sent me over the edge. I buried this for nearly 30 years. Be prepared to be afraid. Paranormal Survivor 3, Story 11, Sean's Spooky Mansion, interview with Sean, Marky. We bought the house in 2006. This was built in 1875. It was uh, full of trash, holes in the walls, um, totally remodeled, fixer-upper. I thought the place had a lot of potential, and it was, it, I, I seen beauty. It's something I always, what we always wanted to do. We always wanted to remodel a house. I worked on the house for three months before we could actually move in the home. That's how uh, much work it really needed. Sean and Stacy had no idea that the renovations would stir up more than just dust. I just cleaned up, uh, took out a few bags of trash, and I came back to lock up the door. And when I, I come to pull the door closed, it sounded like two locomotive trains coming together and colliding. It was uh, the loudest noise I ever heard. I thought that the, the ceiling had caved in and that the, something major happened, you know. Worried a wall had collapsed, Sean went to investigate. There was nothing wrong there. I didn't know what to think about that. Um, spirits may, because of a renovation taking place in a home, be really angry. So what they might do is they might cause a little bit of upset by banging, by moving things, by causing sounds that are upsetting, water running, um, the sound of uh, footsteps or creaking, uh, scratching, a myriad of noises. As the reno progressed, Sean and Stacy were able to move into the house with their two children, but they soon discovered that they weren't the only ones present. <laughs> there was a little girl, she had a dress on. Her face was just so cold as if she's like looking at me, but yet she was looking through me. Stacy! Um, I screamed and I jumped back. Stacy! I was completely scared. Girl in, this, in the back. I really didn't believe him. She had, it looked like blondish type hair. It was in pigtails. <laughs> and then when she disappeared, that really freaked me out. I was scared because I've never seen anything like that before. That wasn't the last of the little girl spirit. Without Sean or Stacy knowing, it had befriended their eight-year-old daughter, Mara. Mara, sweetheart, it's time for bed. You know, I have a surprise for you. I told her I was gonna knock her wall down in her bedroom and make her room bigger. But Daddy, this is Irene's room. She said, well, what about that little girl? She said that the little girl's name was Irene. Who is Irene? Mara believes that that little girl lives in that room. It, it made me go numb. It, it really scared me. My, my, I had like no feeling in my legs when I, when I heard that my daughter actually not only seen what I saw, but uh, actually spoke to the little girl. I think it's time for bed. And then when um, my daughter said that when she seen the same little girl, that's when I was really getting scared. I didn't believe in the paranormal, but then to, to hear my little girl tell me that um, she actually seen something, um, and then I see what I saw, 
uh, made me made me a believer. Children are much more open to communicating with spirit because they can see them, hear them, feel them, and have a sense of knowing much easier than adults. Um, again, they haven't had their psychic senses blocked. They haven't been taught that it's just their imagination and it's just nonsense. As the weeks went by, the activity in the house started to get more aggressive. After I did some more remodeling upstairs, it progressed. The door started to, to slam. My kids were frightened, as if it had a lock on it, but there's no locks on the door. Some things would move into the room when they would be in there. They were frightened. Laura, open the door! Oh, they were very, very scared. <laughs> Sean finally opened the door and got him out. I was scared, I was freaked out. Next, it would be Sean's turn. I felt like somebody was twirling my hair. <laughs> and there was a woman sitting on the edge of my bed. I scream and I jerked. <laughs> when I screamed, my hair got pulled. <laughs> she still had a hold of my hair. Her face turned to a mean face. <laughs> What's wrong? Sean was pretty upset. I was very scared because I didn't know what it was. Oh my God. I'll never forget exactly what that woman looked like. As Sean continued to renovate the house, he became the focus of the paranormal activity. One night, he had just finished work for the day. There was a, a shadow of a man that was in the doorway. All of a sudden, it just grabs me by the leg. That would have to be the biggest man hands. They were just huge. It was intense. Uh, I actually thought I was going to have a stroke. He was a little taller than I was. He never stopped looking at me. And I got drawn back about four or five feet. And then it, it let go. I took off running. And then uh, I got the hell out of there. Before renovating, if you don't want to disrupt a spirit, what is a good idea to do is to talk to the spirit, to let them know what's going on, and to even ask their permission. Even if they don't want it, you can still go ahead and do the renovation, but just asking permission, letting them know what's happening. Soon the male spirit was watching their every move. I was giving my four-year-old son, Preston, a haircut, and he was in his bedroom at the time. And I um, asked him to say cheese so I could take his picture. Say cheese, Preston. I kept saying, Preston, say cheese. Preston, say cheese. Come on, say cheese. And Preston wouldn't say it. Some man's voice, real angry, said, say cheese, boy. Preston was scared. When Sean and Stacy began renovations on their dream home, they never imagined they would stir up the spirit world or that those spirits would become violent. And she said that it felt like she had been slapped in the face or somebody had put a hot coal on the side of her face. My face felt really, really hot. It felt like if you ever got smacked and it got real, real hot on my face. I think it was that man when it, that grabbed me. It could actually do harm if it really wanted to. We um, decided to leave because I was very scared. With the activity so unpredictable, Sean sent Stacy and the kids to a hotel and was left to face the spirits alone. 
we have a cabinet with our, our wedding memorabilia in it, and there's a his and her wine glass. And mine, the one that says his, was thrown and busted on the floor. And this screaming starts coming out of my television. It was loud. It was like a group of people screaming. And I unplug everything, and the TV stayed on with this screaming coming out of it. The volume level was almost ear piercing at that point. To hear that screaming and then to, to know that everything is unplugged, it was horrifying. Oh. It's an awful feeling to feel that you, you could be forced out of your own home. It's awful. Unable to take any more, Sean called in paranormal investigator Carlo Zuzik. I think the reason Sean wanted to proceed with the investigation is to get answers. You know, he wanted answers. He wanted to validate what's happening here. If I needed to put a wall back up or, you know, fix the floor back to the way it was, you know, I, I, was, I was hoping that it was going to be something just easy, an easy fix. The feeling that this house had was really weird because you could feel energy that was in here. We're not sure if this spirit could lash out at us. As we're walking through, we actually recorded a woman saying, go upstairs. The EVP we got was whispers, but you could clearly hear it say, go upstairs. We started uh, in the daughter's bedroom. And I heard what clearly sounded like a child saying, hello. And I looked back, I was like, there's nobody behind me. What's your name? It was definitely a, a little girl's voice that I actually heard. I actually heard that little girl. That was surprising to me. Sean and Carlo followed the female voice downstairs, but they were met with something new and much more threatening. We got a male's voice. It said, get out of here. Undeterred, Carlo attempted to communicate with the spirits. We know that there's a woman and a child here. But they were no longer in the mood to talk. I'm sitting there asking questions, and all of a sudden you could hear something run by. Who else is here? I threw up my flashlight real quick because it kind of startled me. When I heard those footsteps, they actually sounded like they were coming towards me. OK, we're done for the night. It was darker than dark. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face. And hearing those footsteps, like they were going to rush up on you, um, it kind of spooked me a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't get all the answers for Sean, but we did validate that there is definitely um, spirits here. And we did confirm that there's a child and a male spirit present. He did ask us not to do a cleansing and blessing just because he wanted to do a little more research on the spirits that were on his property. I'm hoping to find out that if, if it's like something that they want us to, to do or, or um, if it's an old family member, perhaps. I don't believe they're evil. Um, I believe that they are very protective of their space. With Sean doing their um, renovations here, I think that actually sparked everything. But they're being physical already. It could, it could get worse over time. It's still active. And if it puts its hands on us one more time, I'm done.
Renovating an entire home can cause obvious supernatural havoc. But just as much terror can be unleashed by the most minor of changes. This is Paranormal Survivor 3, story number 16, Elizabeth's Haunted House, interview featuring Elizabeth Marker. When we first saw the house, we were out front and we were looking at it and it was like an old, like it was one of the first houses on the street that was built. See it's an old house, yeah. um, a really nice street. Um, there's great. And my daughter pointed up at the window. I didn't really think of anything of it. Thanks for helping me move, Dave. Two weeks later, Elizabeth and her daughter moved into the house with the help of her friend, Dave. When we moved in, we went downstairs, and there was a cold room, and it was boarded, like with these long pieces of wood and it was nailed. What? It was so strange, like from the top all the way down. Who would board up a room like that? When I first saw it, it was kind of strange. Like, why would somebody do take the time and effort to do this? Despite her fears, Elizabeth needed the extra space for her family and decided then and there to begin renovations in the basement. I got my friend to open the door because I was so scared. When we took the boards off, we went in and it was just a long room and there was like paint falling off and there was like these chains hanging down and it was so strange. And one had a hook on it. It was really creepy. If a room was boarded up, and those boards are now removed. It could have now given spirit permission to come through that door. The person that boarded up that door, they may have done that with the intention of enclosing the spirit. Elizabeth and Ashley settled into their new home, but they soon got the unnerving feeling they were not alone. When you go downstairs, you feel like someone's watching you. Even people that would come over, they would just say, you know, it feels like someone's watching, like watching me. Everywhere, inside the whole house, but mostly, mostly downstairs. I didn't even like going down there. When Elizabeth moved into her new home, she never imagined the simple act of starting a renovation in her basement would let loose a powerful spirit from its prison. I knew there was something creepy going on in this house. And this is my This is Lincoln. Unknown to Elizabeth, Ashley had started having encounters of her own. And this is Patrick. She would spend all the time in her room. Like, all, all the time. Ashley, who are you talking to? But every time I would ask her, like, who are you playing with? She'd put her finger to her mouth and she'd go like, Shh, don't talk. That's all she would say. She would not tell me anything. Do you wanna maybe go outside and play? I had a big backyard and she wouldn't go outside. Danny's not allowed to go outside. Eventually she told me that he was, the little boy wasn't allowed outside. And I said, who? And she's like, Danny. She would play with him, play hide and seek. They were always doing something, you know, with their time. I just thought she was 
playing with her Barbies and her toys. Children tend to be more sensitive to the spirit world because they really don't differentiate between imagination and reality. They're new spirits on this level of existence, and that makes them incredibly attractive to uh, spirits in particular. They have a pure energy about them, and they really are very non-judgmental. They'll take them for face value, and that's very important for spirit. Soon, the activity escalated. My door was banging at 3 o'clock in the morning a few times. It was frantic, it was loud, like, hurry up, come open the door, like, I'm in trouble. I was terrified, so scared, and I was alone. So, yeah, I was really, really scared. really loud, like someone's in trouble. So I ran down and nobody was there. I even went out and looked, I was standing on my porch and I looked, there was nobody, there was no one there. Things would go missing in the house. You would put something down and then it's not there. One morning, I made coffee. And I poured myself a cup. Ashley, time to come down for school. And then I went back into the kitchen. And the coffee pot was not there. I couldn't find it. And this was like a full hot pot of coffee, not there. And I'm looking, and then it was up top of on my cupboard. Like, it was high up there. I said, why is a coffee pot all the way up here? Nobody was at the house, just us. Yeah, I knew it was something in there. Eventually, the activity turned from mischievous to something much more sinister. I had family pictures, and then all of a sudden, they were broken. They, they were on the floor, cracked. Especially where the faces were. All of them, I had about four or five of them. And I thought that was strange, because I didn't even hear them fall or anything. It was like playing a game, I'm trying to scare you. Spirit may want to play tricks on a homeowner for a number of different reasons. They may hide objects, move objects. They may do it as a sense of fun. They may think it's fun. They may also um, try to annoy the homeowner. They may be angry with the homeowner. So they may remove and move about objects. A few nights later, Ashley needed to get something from the basement. After doing some minor renovations to her basement, Elizabeth Cullingworth unleashed a powerful entity that began to target her daughter, Ashley. All of a sudden, Ashley bolted up the stairs 
She's like, I saw something in the cold room. It was um, this man in a top hat and he walked through, like he was in the storage room and he just walked. She's freaking out. So we went down, I went downstairs with her. I saw him over here. And that's when I saw it. Ah! It was definitely like a male, tall, just dark. Dark, dark. Ah! We screamed William Red. Ran outside. I was terrified to go back inside. The encounter had a terrible and lasting effect on Ashley. Ashley, she was just terrified. For weeks and weeks, she was so scared. She didn't want to sleep alone. She slept with me. She was just terrified. I felt bad for her, you know, and it was horrible. Elizabeth began to suspect that the strange activity and the terrifying male entity were connected to the creepy room she had started renovating. That's when I was like, okay, that's why it's boarded. There's something in there. I think if I left the boards, the guy with the top hat or whoever he is would have been left in that, that room. If I had left the boards up, then it would have been less activity in the house. Terrified, Elizabeth called in her minister to help cleanse the house. It was a decision that solicited a warning from Ashley's ghostly companion about the malevolent spirit in the basement. She said that Danny said somebody came into the house and did something to his parents and him, like there, something bad happened. She had a lantern with this dome, so no air could go and blow out these candles. My strength and courage is the Lord. We went downstairs. The candles blew out. And the minister was wondering why they're burnt out. There's no draft, nothing. My God, she looked kind of scared. I am confident. You know, like what is going on? And she had a bad feeling about the house. My strength. <laughs> and the candles just went out. I can't help you, it's far too powerful. She started walking back up the stairs. Please. And she just was like, you need to call the priest. And then she just left. She didn't even stick around or nothing. She just walked out. Like, I didn't know who else to call. But like, the minister won't even help me. If a person has tried absolutely everything that they possibly can in order to evict a spirit from their home, and it's not working, then the only possible thing to do would be to leave that particular environment because there is absolutely nothing that's going to be effective. A person is in death what they are in life. So if they're going to be incredibly strong and completely obstinate, they're going to be so in death and nothing that you do is going to make them leave. I wanted to move out right away. I could not stay there, so we had to leave. I was, I was happy to be gone. I think Ashley would have, something would definitely would have happened to Ashley, because she was friends with the, the ghost, and I think something would have happened to her. He told Ashley that some bad people came into the house and something happened. I would never live in that house ever again. Sometimes paranormal entities can be upset or even angry when homeowners change the physical look or layout of a home. 
On other occasions, spirits are attached to objects contained within the fabric of the building, and disturbing them spells trouble. Okay, this is Paranormal Survivor 3, story number 17, Celine's Phantom Pregnancy, our interview featuring Celine Marker. So our first home together, I needed a lot of work. We looked for a long time and walked in the front door here and knew it was home. Celine and her husband planned to completely overhaul and renovate the home, starting with the furniture. The previous owner's best friend showed up one day and said that she had two chairs that belonged here if I wanted them. They were small wooden kitchen chairs. They were in perfect condition. The friend also shared some disturbing news about the previous owner, an old woman named Goldie. Goldie had lived here on her own and she passed away in the house. Goldie died of a brain aneurysm in the kitchen. Soon after the chairs arrived, strange things started happening in the kitchen. I could smell cigarette smoke. It was a fresh cigarette smell. The smell was very strong. We were not smokers. I looked around, and then it was gone. And I just thought it was strange and carried on. I was sitting directly across from the stove. The numbers on the clock disappeared, like somebody had walked in front of it. I went to look. There was nobody there. My husband did not believe me when I told him the things that had happened. He didn't say much. He was like, well, that's strange. Normally, entities will let a person know that they're there by emanating some form of smell or feeling. For example, a person may be a chain smoker, and the smell of cigarettes could be very much associated with that individual, but it's something that earmarks that particular person. Celine tried to put the experience behind her, but when she discovered that she was expecting her first child, the strange events seemed to escalate. I remember one time I was eating a bowl of cereal. And I couldn't swallow. Like, I felt like I was choking. After planning renovations to their new home, Celine Levine noticed inexplicable smells and shadows. But when she became pregnant, the strange activity took a more threatening turn. When I would have these anxiety attacks, my heart would start to pound and I couldn't think straight. I would experience migraines. I was at the doctor's three times and he said, there's nothing wrong with you. It wasn't all the time, only when I was in the house. With doctors baffled, Celine was forced into a chilling realization about what was causing her migraines. Goldie died of a brain aneurysm in the kitchen. I put the pieces together that when I had that pain in my head, that was my signal that she was there. Spirit can create all sorts of physical sensations in a person by blending their energy into, into the auric field of the other person. As a medium, often spirit will, uh, I felt heart attacks, brain aneurysms, all sorts of different symptoms, um, all by positive entities, just, just letting me know who they are or how they passed. Um, negative entities can do it to make somebody sick, and they will feel very, very sick, very drained, and they'll go to the doctor, and there's no explanation for it. After Celine gave birth to her son, Ben, the activity in the house changed completely. The activity in the house calmed down because I feel that we had given her a family. Goldie never had children, so we brought children into this house. 
For four years, Celine was untroubled by inexplicable shadows, smells, or headaches. But all that changed when she decided to run a daycare out of her home, and those long hoped for renovations materialized. We took out the wall between the kitchen and the dining room on the main floor. We found a coin, an old coin, and then a calendar. I assumed they were Goldies. I kept them as souvenirs. There was a lot of activity, a paranormal activity in this house after that. Sometimes paranormal activity is very much attracted um, to a location when a person uncovers something that's been hidden, perhaps something that's in the wall or something that's been buried. Um, and the reason that that happens is because there is some form of energy attachment to that object. Once it's discovered, that energy is then released into the atmosphere and it's very attractive to that particular entity. It wakes them up. Once again, Celine started to get strange sensations that felt like they belonged to someone else. What did I say about bed? If you've ever been pregnant, you know that sensation of a baby moving in your belly. It's a very distinct pressure sensation. I felt what, from my experience, is a baby move across, like roll across in my stomach. But I wasn't pregnant at the time and it scared me. <laughs> there was something happening in my body that was not mine. That pretty much sent me over the edge. I cried a lot. I was scared. If Celine thought things couldn't get any worse, she was in for a horrible surprise. One day, I was carrying downstairs a, f a few boxes, and all of a sudden, my feet went out from underneath me. And, like, I fell. I remember feeling this light feeling, like there was no banging down the stairs. It was one second I was up here, and one second I was down there. When I fell, I wasn't hurt at all. But I remember feeling uncomfortable, like after you deliver a baby uncomfortable. It's a very, again, a very distinct sensation. From nowhere, Celine heard a voice. That's how I still lost her baby. She fell down the stairs. After I had fallen, I had heard in my head, that's how Estelle had lost her baby. She fell down the stairs. Celine didn't know who Estelle was, but suspected she was the woman whose emotions she'd been feeling. That explained the sadness and my emotions. They felt like mine, but I knew they weren't. A spirit may want a living being to feel what they felt in life because they wish to draw attention to how they felt. They want that person to understand maybe a little bit about what they went through in life. Um, and they may be perhaps stuck in that environment. And because they are able to show that person how they felt, that person might be able to empathize with their situation and then be able to perhaps understand and um, lead them to some sort of freedom. Despite the activity's return, Celine opened the daycare. One of her first customers happened to be a psychic medium, and Celine asked her to look for spirits in the house. Spirits are attracted to me because I can hear them and communicate their messages. Celine had asked me if I would come up to the bedroom um, just to see if I felt anything. Amanda sensed a spirit whose name Celine immediately recognized. Estelle. Estelle um, previously lived in this home. And she, when I first met her, it was up in um, their son's bedroom. 
She was sitting in this rocking chair, staring out the window with a sad expression on her face. She was sitting there and almost like with a, a baby stuffed animal in her hand and just rocking. She was mourning the loss of her unborn child. Estelle is here. And she I was pretty surprised there was another one, another spirit in the house. Estelle had been an occupant of this house before Goldie. Amanda explained why Celine had been experiencing strange feelings. Celine was basically reliving what Estelle had went through. When I was in my son's room and I felt that baby move, that was Estelle's baby that I felt. Ah! And then when I fell down the stairs and I learned that she had lost the baby, I put the pieces together that she never got to have that family. Hence the sadness that I felt. I've never cried so hard in my life. A lot of the times the deceased will, especially with empaths, they'll let them feel how they died. Homeowner Celine Levine was tormented by painful sensations. Psychic medium Amanda Dubois determined Celine was experiencing the pain felt by two of the home's previous owners. So Celine has felt the the aneurysm headache that you know that Goldie must have felt before she had passed. It was terrifying for me to realize that what I had been feeling was not mine. I feel like she was being bombarded, possessed. They essentially take control over you. So to be not in control of yourself is, is the most scariest thing I think you can go through. She was traumatized by what she was experiencing in her home. Amanda had said, there are three items in your home tying Goldie and Estelle to the house. They need to go. I feel that the chairs and the coin that used to belong to Goldie tie her to the property. I really felt the calendar had come from Estelle. There was a date marked on there that we were kind of getting the sense was maybe the day that she had fallen and had the miscarriage. The chair I put across the street at my neighbor's house with the intention of somebody taking them. The calendar and the coin, they threw it into the garbage. If spirit is connected to the objects and you get rid of the objects, spirit will often then go away. It's as simple as that. If, however, um, it's just reawakened them, um, spirit might stay a, a while longer if they've now made a connection to the family. Celine tried to get on with her life but she wasn't going to escape the activity that easily. I went into my son's room. My chest gets tight. I was feeling that sadness, that grief. Nope, there's still something wrong. There's still something there. In the face of such powerful and stubborn activity, Amanda suggested an exorcism. She said that the, there was an energy attached to me that was not meant to be there. So she did a spirit removal. Basically an exorcism. <laughs> she put one hand on my shoulder. Dean, oh Lord and said these words, and I felt this immense pain in my chest, and I cried and cried and cried. And grant us thy powerful protection. I felt a physical drawing out from my heart area. We drive from you, whoever you may be. It was very strong, very, I remember being very painful. And it was 
like somebody was reaching in and pulling out of my heart. And grant us thy powerful protection. The most high God commands you. They've left her home and they've moved on. I felt completely at peace and completely at, like me again. There was no anxiety, no pain. Thank you. From my experience, I am now a complete believer in paranormal <laughs> activity and anything to do with spirits. <laughs> Things settled down around here, but it was a very intense time. Brought in a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety. 